I'm Anandita Kulkarni. I'm a preventive cardiologist at Baylor Scott & White Heart Hospital, Baylor Plano. Let's get to your questions. Lipoprotein A is proatherogenic, meaning that it increases atherosclerosis or plaque buildup in the arteries among different vascular beds. This means that it can increase your risk for heart disease and be troublesome. If you have elevated lipoprotein A, you should talk to your doctor about how to reduce your risk for heart disease. Familial hypercholesterolemia is a genetically inherited condition that leads to lifelong elevations in LDL cholesterol or the bad cholesterol that causes heart disease. It is not only how high the cholesterol is, but the duration of time that it remains high that allows for damage to the arteries. Lipoprotein A is an independent and causal risk factor for heart disease. Having both conditions significantly increases one's risk for heart disease. However, aggressive treatment of LDL cholesterol and all modifiable risk factors for heart disease can dramatically lower that risk. Individuals with familial hypercholesterolemia should be screened for elevated lipoprotein A. It is always better to check with your clinician to ensure that a lipoprotein A level has been checked if you have familial hypercholesterolemia, as this is not always done by everyone. But hopefully, by better informing the medical community about lipoprotein A, we can change that. Given that lipoprotein A is such a robust risk factor for heart disease, it is important that everyone be screened for elevated lipoprotein A. There are no medications that are commercially available at this time to lower lipoprotein A levels. However, there are several that are currently in development and appear to be progressing favorably through clinical trials. Current strategies for managing elevated lipoprotein A include reducing the overall risk of heart disease. This includes aggressively lowering LDL cholesterol and optimizing other biometrics such as blood pressure, blood sugar, and lifestyle metrics such as diet and exercise. Inflammation can raise LP little a levels. LP little a in and of itself is pro-inflammatory and inflammation drives heart disease. There's a complex interplay among each of these and one that is not yet fully understood. But I hope that we will be able to get more clarity on this as we learn more about LP little a. Elevated LP little a can cause disease in many vascular territories throughout the body, including the peripheral arterial circulation, which can lead to peripheral arterial disease. Peripheral arterial disease is buildup of plaque, primarily in the lower extremities, which can lead to pain while walking or other symptoms referred to as claudication. Among those with elevated LP little a, it is important to aggressively control all risk factors for heart disease. Currently, in many instances, this includes lowering the LDL cholesterol with statin therapy. However, this needs to be an individual discussion between the patient and their physician. A coronary calcium score is an excellent way to assess for calcified plaque in the coronary arteries through a low dose CT scan. Frequency of screening depends on a number of factors such as age, how much plaque you have, and how well your risk factors are controlled. While there are not a lot of different ways to continue to monitor heart disease in asymptomatic individuals, in most people, optimizing blood pressure, blood sugar, cholesterol, eating right, not smoking, exercising regularly, and getting enough sleep will substantially reduce the progression of heart disease. The general answer is eating a heart-healthy diet, but what does that really mean? Different people would define that in different ways. In general, we want you to focus on eating fresh fruits and vegetables, whole grains, and avoiding overly sugary, processed, and ultra-processed foods. I also add in my own recommendations to my patients to avoid fast food and limit eating out too much. There's a reason why things taste delicious at a restaurant. Everything is full of salt, sugar, and fat. We want you to be in control of what you eat.
There are no specific recommendations for exercise in individuals with elevated LP little a. However, our guideline recommendations for physical activity overall emphasize 150 minutes per week of moderate intensity physical activity. That breaks down into exercising for 30 minutes at a time, five days a week. This is any activity that gets your heart rate up and where you feel like you have to push yourself a little bit. Additionally, the American Heart Association recommends walking a minimum of 10,000 steps a day, which is approximately five miles. Overall, the goal is to sit less and move more. You know, that's an interesting question and one that I think we'll continue to learn about more in the upcoming years. We've learned a great deal about LP little a over the last several years. And one of the biggest questions that remains to be adequately addressed is how do we manage elevated lipoprotein A among those in a primary prevention category, meaning those without heart disease? On a simplistic level, the answer in minors would also be to treat all modifiable risk factors for heart disease aggressively. Whether that includes treatment with medications would depend greatly on individual risk factors and family history. Once again, an opportunity um, for a discussion between the patient and the physician. Well, estrogen-containing oral contraceptives can increase the risk of forming blood clots. We also know that LP little a is prothrombotic or increases the risk of forming blood clots. While we do not have the data to support making a blanket statement about the use of oral contraceptives among individuals with elevated LP little a, it can be a cause of concern and should be addressed on an individual basis with your physician to discuss the risks and benefits. I'm going to piggyback off of my answer to the previous question, where we know that both estrogen and LP little a are prothrombotic. So the decision to use estrogen replacement therapy among those with elevated lipoprotein A needs to be individualized with your physician after a discussion of the risks and benefits. There are a number of pharmacologic trials that are currently in development to target elevated lipoprotein A. Progress among these trials has been promising to date. As we know, with any drug development, this process can take several years as any new medication will need to be vetted for both safety and efficacy. While I don't have a specific answer to when the medications will be available, I am hopeful and optimistic that it'll be within the next few years, maybe two to five. Thank you to everyone for your wonderful questions. If you'd like to learn more about elevated lipoprotein A or any other topics, please look at the familyheart.org website. If you need any help on your healthcare journey, you can always contact a Family Heart Foundation care navigator.